Hi there folks, Coach JC here with another Home Body Sculpting and Mobility video post and more significantly, Happy New Year and congratulations for making it to 2023. Now you probably never hear people say congratulations, but if you look over 2022, particularly in my industry, I've seen a lot of people's health deteriorate because they've not looked after it or maybe not even make it to 2023. So if you're one of those people who made it to 2023 and you've still got your health intact, you should pat yourself on the back. Congratulations, you are doing something right. However, nature has this way of trying to make us regress. So there's no such thing as stagnation. If you keep doing the same thing that you're always doing, what will happen is you'll start to regress. So you're fighting against nature. So you need to be able to appreciate the things that you have, maintain it, use it, or you will lose it. And I always say, people who are grateful, not only are the easiest people to coach, they're pleasant, and they are always happier. So spend a bit of time just being a bit grateful for what you still have. And for 2023, we're going to make sure that there is still progress rather than regress. Now, remember, we are not cows and sheep. What about cows and sheep? They don't really care about making progress throughout the year as long as they're getting what they need for today. So that as long as they're getting their food on, their feed on, their grind on, their sleep on, their dump on, they are happy. But we of what we call self-esteem and confidence. And they are maintained, not by what other people say about us, which is very fleeting, but by our accomplishments. Did I achieve something different? So this is the reason why we have our New Year's resolutions, because we want to look at ourselves and say, where was I this time last year? Did I accomplish something? If not, you're not going to be very proud of yourself. If you do, then you will be very proud of yourself and your confidence will act accordingly. Now, here's the deal. Okay, we have our New Year's resolutions and we know the running joke. In our industry, the gyms will be heaving. Right now, you will not find any space in your gym. You know, you probably won't even find space to be able to put your stuff in the locker room. But hang tight because we know what will happen come February, second week of February, usually there's going to be like a 90% drop off. Okay, why does that happen? Now, if you think it's to do with willpower, I assure you, you will be another statistic as well. It's not because of willpower. It's because we don't have a strategy in place. I'm going to explain this, and then we're going to go through our strategy to make sure that when we do have our New Year's resolutions, they stick like glue. Right? Why do we people drop off? Well, they drop off because you are changing your lifestyle to something you're not familiar with. And it's all well and good doing those sort of things when things are going well. But the moment you have a tough day at work or fall out with your partner, you want to go back to your comfort zone just to make yourself feel good. Now, if you have a strategy in place, you might be able to remind yourself, ah, I don't want to go back to this and that will help you. But if you don't have it in writing, you haven't planned it properly, then you will drop off like everybody else. So if you don't have a pen and paper right now, I suggest you get yourself a pen and paper pause this video and we'll go through methodologies to make sure that our New Year's resolutions stick. Okay, are you ready to go? Good. Now, I hate to sound like your boss in the office because we've been away from them for a while and they always talk about what we call SMART goals. Yes, those ones are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and in a time frame, but they do work. Because again, it stops us from meandering or responding to our impulses when we feel like we want to give up. It's very clear and it's scribed out. So I'll give you an example. I've got a, a client who is going to do a photo shoot, photo shoot sorry, on the mid-March they'll be doing the photo shoot. Okay, She knows that she does not want to have photographs for prosperity that are not looking very great. So she can't move away from it. She's paid for it. There you go. How are we going to achieve it so we get good photo shoots? So you want to have something that's a nice, hard, fast goal for you to achieve this year and then write down how you're going to achieve it. So if you find yourself sort of veering off it, you might want to increase your intensity on the amount of time, the frequency in which you do the exercise and activities. But at least you've got that hard goal there for you. OK, I won't go into smart discussions anymore. But the other reason why people tend to drop off is because the lifestyle is too drastic a change. Now, there is a fact that the lifestyle that you live reflects the outcome that you get, right? You look in the mirror in the morning and you see that you've got a podgy stomach. That is a reflection of the lifestyle you're living and that's it. Now, there are ways around it, but we don't want to change the way the body signals to us. And that is not a healthy path. So we want to go down the healthy path of making sure that when you look in the mirror, reflects the lifestyle that you live. But the problem is, it's either one or the other. 
Now, if you live the lifestyle that you want to live, you tend to not get the outcome that you want. So if you actually want the outcome that you want, it's vice versa. So what are we going to do? Now, when we start the year, we say, I don't want to be a smoker or a drinker and I want to lose, say, five stones or so on. Then we do a drastic change and that lifestyle becomes alien to us. And because it's so alien to us, like I said earlier, as soon as things go hard and tough for us, we go back to what we know and we're familiar with. But if we do it in incremental changes, so okay, January, I'm going to change this. February, I'm going to change something else. For March, we're going to change another thing. We slowly but gradually morph into the lifestyle that we want and we become familiar with it. And plus, the old lifestyle will not look appealing to you anymore. So that's really what you want to be doing. So I'm just going to go through some examples. And these are just examples that I've known to work. So number one, for January, you need to be more active, but I don't mean exercise, okay? Exercise is not good for weight loss. Exercise is good for strength. It's good for mobility. It's good for your immune system. It's good for your well-being. But it isn't great for weight loss. And if you go down that path, again, you might get yourself feeling a little bit disillusioned because you're not getting the results you want. Planned exercise is not good for weight loss. What is good for weight loss is ranking up or your metabolism with your daily activities. What you do is a habit on a daily basis. And what will happen is that your metabolism will ramp up accordingly. So think about it. Technology is designed to make us inactive. Once upon a time, we used to have to go out and hunt for our food or we'd have to go and turn over the soil and grow it. And then we take it in the house and then we would cook it. Now, all you have to do is use your thumb and food will come delivered to you on your lap. You don't even have to even tell somebody to meet me downstairs at the door. They'll come to your door. This is just not natural. So we need to get back to being more active. And I, as a rule of thumb, if I have to travel anywhere within a quarter of a mile radius, I will walk it. Wind, rain, snow, sleet. I'm going to walk it. I'm not going to go into my car. And once I get into that habit, then going into the car becomes something that I feel is really re revolting, really, to be honest with you. It's too short a distance. We're not designed to do that. So what can you do that's more active on a daily basis, which you're supposed to do, whether that be cleaning, uh, going up the stairs, you know, listening to music on a daily basis makes you move a lot more. And if you're moving a lot more, it doesn't matter about what people see because there's nobody there watching you. But if you're doing it while cleaning, for example, you're sweeping and you're dancing at the same time, you'll find that you'll burn more calories that way because your resting metabolism will go up. So we're looking at a more active lifestyle. Please get rid of the sedentary lifestyle. That is not going to work no matter how many times you go to the gym. All right. Now, we're going to look at also training the palate. So I would say in February, train the palate to appreciate food the way it's supposed to be. And I would start by getting rid of condiments and sauces. So get rid of them all. They're stacked with sugar, stacked with additives. Not very healthy at all, but it only takes a matter of like three weeks before you really appreciate the taste of food. Even like in my teas and coffees, take no, put no sweeteners in there. Even if it's stevia or xylitol, which are healthy, but I want to train my palate to be able to appreciate food the way it's intended to be. Then once it's trained and I go back to it, I taste it, it's like repulsive. It's too hyper palatable and I don't want that. So try and train that. Again, we've not really gone into weight loss, but we're becoming, we're morphing into the lifestyle that we want. Okay, now in March, okay, we're now learning to actually start cooking our foods all the time. All right, get rid of the processed foods that are out there. Okay, if it's got lots and lots of ingredients on it, on the list, then that is a processed food. And there is actually evidence now that is showing a link between processed foods and dementia. So if you bear that in mind, you can get back to eating foods that we are cooking. Now, you don't have to be a great cook. In fact, the more diverse and varied your cuisine is, the more likely it is that you're not going to be able to be healthy because really cuisine is about having a stock meal that you know are going to provide the nutrients on a daily basis that you require. And I daily basis where I have sweet potato, chicken, maybe avocados, um, broccoli, and that's pretty much it, really. Uh, I have my eggs because it's got lots and lots of nutrients in it, and that's it. Anything else is kind of surplus to requirements. So that's what I'm looking at. You need to have a stock meal. We're going to go into that in another video post. I never mentioned fish. We definitely need to have fish within our diet, or at least fish oils within our diet. But that's it. You don't need to be that diverse. All right, so now we've got rid. We've got our lives to be a little bit more active. We've got rid of the sauces in our foods and now we've got uh, less processed food and we're cooking properly and we haven't even gone into the gym yet, okay? So now as we're going into the gym, 
looking at working on our strength. Now, again, we've got all these people with these devices that will say, okay, while I'm doing my exercises, um, uh, I've burnt this much calories. So I, I say I do a workout and I burn 120 calories in that period of time. Okay, at the end of that, I drink something or eat something like a, even a few digestive biscuits and it's all being canceled out. So that's why it's not that important what you do during the exercise, but after the exercise is what you're looking at. So if you do strength training, what will happen is while you've torn all the muscle fibers with that exercise, okay, of course you need to push yourself to your limit. Then when you rest, the body will be doing all the work and repairing itself. And that's what the metabolism is all about, repairing while you're resting, relaxing. So you wanna start working on your strength training. Okay, now we're going into sort of May, March. Okay, and you want to make sure that you're optimizing that resting. So what we're looking at is making sure we get good sleep in there. So when you're sleeping, you wanna make sure you get your seven hours worth of sleep and do treat it as if it's holy. Otherwise, all the work you're doing is not gonna be able to do its job. Okay, remember what happens during your rest time is what gets you the benefits, not while you're active. Now you wanna work on your sleep hygiene. So get into the habit of getting rid of the mobile phone at least an hour before you sleep. Okay, you may even use blue blockers or what have you, and then get yourself into the seven hours worth of sleep. So now we're going into a healthier lifestyle, right? Now you don't have to do exactly what I've done, but I will include those things into it within the 12 months, right? Now, we're going to the second half of the year, and here are the list of other things that you might want to include into your changes, okay? For example, eating less frequently, get rid of the snacks, okay? You go into your store and right as soon as you open up the, the petrol station or your supermarket in a convenience store, you'll see a whole load of snacks that you can eat. You don't really need the snacks. I never grew up eating snacks. We just had our meals. So you might want to get rid of the snacks and so on. You also might want to, of course, like quit alcohol, quit smoking. You might want to look at intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, get familiar with sort of eating within a window. If you want to go into prolonged fasting, again, you need to do it progressively. Don't go straight into 24-hour fasting. You want to start by doing, say, like a 12-hour fast. There's not going to be great benefits for it, but you're training yourself to become familiar with it. And then you go into the 14 hours, 15 hours, 16 hours, and maybe 20 hours, then 24 hours, and so on. All right. But again, if you're going to be fasting, make sure that you are doing it properly and you've got a guide. Don't just go into a fast. Okay, You may have adverse effects. And then, of course, we're looking at our mobility. Uh, mobility is making sure we're a bit more flexible. Um, and, you know, again, the number one thing about home body sculpting mobility is that we are looking at making sure that we feel good within our bodies. Okay, so these are some of the things that you might want to put in your list. And then we can look back at ourselves at the end of 2023 and say, hey, I've accomplished something and I'm happy with my lifestyle and I have no desire to go back to where we were. So that's our goal for the year. We want to look at ourselves and say, look, I am stronger and better and fitter. You want to be able to meet people you haven't seen throughout the year and they go, wow, you look better. That's our goal. But we will continue to work together to feel great, look good and enjoy moving. But remember also to like, subscribe on my videos. I'll see you then. Bye.